have designed a powered leg brace. This uses foot sensors in the soles of the shoe, an angle sensor, and those detect the section of the stride cycle while you're walking in order to rotate the motor so that it will bend and extend your leg appropriately. Our powered leg brace is intended for a student with cerebral palsy and his condition means that he has very tight hamstring muscles which makes it difficult for him to extend his leg um, to the full degree and so our brace is basically going to help him extend and bend his leg while he's walking. Um, it's an iPad application that lets you create, play and share 2D side-scrolling games and the idea is that we want people to be able to use it without having any programming or game development experience. All right. So I can also drag and drop an enemy and if I just have the enemy by itself nothing really happens. What I can do is add a script to the enemy. So I can do something like, when you contact the side of the enemy, we can say it's game over. If you change the scripts, you completely change the game. It plays like a completely different game. Um, so, so for each level, each user, they can just create whatever type of game that they want using the scripting system. Our design project is called Autonomous Camera Drone. And uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're trying to get this quadcopter here to follow a person as they move around. Uh, we use um, image processing to do this and uh, as you can see from our videos uh, the drone tries to keep the user in the center of the image at all times. As they move forward it moves back, as you turn it uh, rotates to follow you. Uh, all the code is running on this uh, board, Odroid, and the user simply needs to press this button to take it off and uh, this button again to land it. Our project is a massive multiplayer online API. In this project, it's, uh, we have split it up into three parts. One being the client API, one being the server API, and one is integration into Unity. The server also provides more abstraction to the networking layer, thus having a developer without much experience in networking and servers to be able to create an MMO game. The main focus is that we're using all the methods that we created in our API and utilizing them and showing that it's working. So just this walking around means that the player was able to log into servers that were created by us, that the packets are being transmitted using the serializers that we created, and all the RPC framework is also on the client side, it's also what we created. What makes our Photon Simulator special is that it's actually the world's first simulator that runs on a GPU with OpenCL support in uh, or, or for a tetrahedral mesh. I simulated a mouse which had cancer in its tail. And so the idea then is to compare where exactly the light um, is, uh, is, is dispersed here with where the tumor is. And the whole idea is that you want a, a drug and let's say for example this drug is a photosensitizing agent then any kind of light that will then afterwards come in contact with this tissue will get killed. And the whole idea is that you want to inject this photosensitizer around the area where cancers or tumors live and then of course apply light subsequently afterwards in those same areas, hence by trying to kill um, as much of the tumor as possible and as little of, of, of the actual healthy tissue as possible, right? This is our um, project. It's called the Smart Electricity Transmission Grid Modeling. Basically, the goal is to prevent what happened two years ago from happening again, or at least uh, shorten the duration of the power outage caused by the freezing rain. So for our design, we're implementing sort of um, a, network, uh, a network topology towards the electricity transmission model. For our model, we're implementing using a lab power supply as the generators and uh, Raspberry Pis as the controllers. And we'll have these uh, individual custom-made PCB boards as the regulator switch, uh, which will further control the loads. We're trying to solve a problem, and that problem is there are there's a disease right now called prosopagnosia, and this is an impairment of the recognition of familiar faces, which affects around approximately 2 to 2.5 percent of the population. And currently, there's no cure for this condition. Our idea was we wanted to create a light and mobile application um, that 
that could be used to um, recognize faces. We have a com we have a few like major components. You have a camera to take in the input, and then you first crop up the face using facial detection, and then based on this face, you do a facial recognition, and then it's live. This is live stream back to the phone screen, and then on the phone screen, the face will be labeled. So our demo is a, a campus planner app. Uh, basically, what it does is combines two uh, features. We're using a uh, Wi-Fi signals to uh, triangulate your position within a building. And it's also the other part is to schedule events so you can plan events with your friends. You can go to the event page, fill out all the details like name, type, uh, start date, end date, uh, and you can uh, then uh, select a room where you want to meet your friends. All that stuff as you can see in the video, uh, selecting the time. And then uh, once you submit, the friend would get a notification. Uh, well, yeah, so he, when he gets a notification, he has the option to accept it or decline it. So what we want to do is um, basically a hands-free control interface. This hands-free control interface has to be non-intrusive. That's why we chose an EEG device as well as an eye tracker, as you can see here. The camera will give the user a video feedback, so from there, the user will know where he wants to move the vehicle. After he knows where he wants to move the vehicle, he can control the vehicle you know, using its wheels. Now we are, we are switched to mode 2, which is a hands-free mode. So basically, the user is controlling the rover using eye movement and the neural feedback. The frequency divider design consists of an input transformer. We only have a single-ended source, but given the topology of our circuit, it's a differential circuit, and so we need a one-to-one -one, single-ended to differential uh, transformer at the input stage. Then we have our static divider, and following that, we have an emitter follower and a chain of inverters to have the appropriate output buffer so we can test it on chip. Our project is concentrated photovoltaic charging station. We have built an automatic sun tracking system for Blue Sky Solar Racing Team. We have built this charging station. In order for, to extract maximum power from those solar panels, the panels should be exactly perpendicular to the sun. So we have built a dual axis solar tracker to track the sun and position the panel exactly perpendicular to, to the sun. The sun moves around in the sky over time, so uh, it's really important for solar panels to be oriented normal to the sun's rays. So how the system works is uh, it's got some uh, solar cells as sensors that detect the light coming from the sun and uh, the controller will, will read the solar cells and depending on how much light is hitting each solar cell, it'll actually move the panel uh, in certain directions. When the solar panel receives light from the sun, uh, the more perpendicular the light is to the panel, the more power it'll receive. And that's why it's important to uh, orient the panel normal to the sun.